Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. This is what we're making today. I absolutely love this cake topper and you can see it's pretty stable. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to make it and um, we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks. Um, we are, the, the major thing that we're incorporating on this one is we have lights going on so that where you see the lights in the haunted house, it's gonna look kind of creepy. <laughs> So this is what it looks like when I designed it. It looks a little bit different than how I actually placed everything. So the figures, the Hello Kitty in costume, um, it looked a little busy. So I actually only had four in the front. And then what I did was I had that kitty up here. So that would make it look exactly like this, all right? So let's get started. These are all design space images and because they are design space images, oops, you'll notice that it's missing some of the things that I always have, which is an offset, right? Um, I like to have my offsets because I feel like it will, one, it gives stability to the project and then two, I think it just looks more polished, but Everything was a design space image, except for the Hello Kitty characters, of course. Those, I just took a screenshot on my phone, cleaned it up, and did a print and cut. So I'm not gonna show you how to do the print and cut, because that's on my phone, but um, I'll show you how to piece together everything. All right, so let's bring in our haunted house. Let's go to images, and let's bring in all the things that I used, okay? So I used haunted house, so let's search for that. <clears throat> And let's see if I can find the same one. Um, oh, here it is, it's this one. And I love it because it's in layers. So here's this one. And let's move it over here. Okay, so you can see, I kept it the same. Um, I like the orange door and everything. Let's go to images. Let's bring in a fence. And I added the fence so that I can add the characters sitting on the fence. So it's this one. And what's cool about this fence is you can't tell in person because in person the characters are sitting on top of it anyway but I basically made it long by doing three of them and welding it together to make it one big piece, okay? So that's one. I need the boo sign, which, oh, the boo is, the font is a frightful affair. So let's go to text, go to font and type in frightful. And it's this one. I like this one because it is also layered. So it gives you an opportunity to bring in more colors um, and also give you an offset look even though we didn't do an offset. <laughs> okay, so here's our boo. The only thing we're missing are the bats. Um, so let's go to images and type in bats. And I think I just picked three three random ones. Like I like this one, this one. I think the only thing that I didn't want was anything complicated. So I wanted just the silhouette of a bat. So this is up to you which one you want to use. Um, I'll just pick one because I don't remember the ones I chose. <laughs> okay. So here are our images. I'm going to move it. I'm gonna zoom out just so that we can always have both images in the picture so that you could see what we're building and then show you how to do the rest. Now, whenever I'm designing, I'm, I never look at how big something is. So like, I don't care that this house is already 4.7 by seven basically, right? That's already kind of big. I don't care. I just wanna make everything proportionate to one another and then I'll resize at the end, okay? So here's my house. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so that we can see it. Let's look at this fence. Now see how like the fence is like this? And I knew the fence was gonna be in front of the house. So the door is covered by the fence. So, cause I want the fence to be like, if it was in real life, 50 yards in front of the house, right? So there's like a huge yard in the front. Um, so here's my fence. 
and I just duplicated it two times because I have three of these. And I knew you wouldn't be able to tell, so I'm gonna move this down just a little bit so that we can see it. Um, I didn't think that you would be able to tell that they are the same thing, the same image, just um, duplicated, you know, two times. Make sure that the fence is touching one another. That way it's gonna be a strong um, fence and all welded. So we're gonna grab the three and weld it. And then put it here. And depending on if you like the way this looks or if you feel like this fence needs to be a little bit smaller, this is up to you, okay? There's my image, okay? Now, I wanted the moon in the background because you know I felt like I needed to add things because I didn't have the offset and a shaker, <laughs> things that I'm used to. So with the moon, the way I did it was, um, I just went and grabbed a circle. And I did something like this, okay? Then I duplicated the circle. And let's say this is 4.6. I'm gonna make this circle 4.4, just slightly smaller. Oops, I did it the opposite. I'm gonna make this white. And what I ended up using was I used a, um, what is it called, foil paper. So it's from Cricut. I used the silver foil. So it was reflective, so it's, it was kind of cool. All right, so here's my original. I put it somewhere like this. Then I put this on top. So it gives me a little bit of an offset. Arrange, send to the front. So you can see a little bit of the black outline. I kind of wanted it that way. And then my bats are gonna go in my moon, on top of my moon. So just size that accordingly. And let's move these bats to the front. So these two arrange, send to the front. This one sent to the front. It really doesn't matter whether you send it to the front or not, but the only reason why I do it is so that I can see all my layers, like how I would layer them, okay? That's the only thing, because obviously when you go to cut this, you can layer it however you want to. You know, just move your bats around because they're not all gonna be facing the same way. <laughs> and I also did them different sizes. And they don't have to be in the moon, like one could be out like that, okay. Um, but the house is gonna be on top, so just know like if the house goes out here, the, the bat's gonna be covered. So you kinda wanna just space it so that you know what you have. Okay, let's say that's it. Um, and then we have our boo. So the boo, what did I do? I ungrouped it. And then I kind of wanted it going this way because I felt like we were missing something here. So let's ungroup everything. Okay, and it's layered, so let's see if it moves now. Okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger. And I, let's see, the black layer is still grouped together, so ungroup it. Then what I would do is, let's move this, um, grab your black layer and move it to the back. Mm, okay. Um, arrange, send to the back. Now I did my black uh, layer, I changed it to, Let's see, uh, let's see, I changed this to green, so we can just change it to green now. Because I wanted to incorporate your typical Halloween colors, which is orange, yellow, um, orange, yellow was gonna be the light, and then purple. So, where's my boo in black? Here it is. 
So I'm gonna grab these and change it to purple. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group the B and the B in the back. I'm gonna group them together. So as I move one, the other one moves with it. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the O and this O. And I'm doing it also because I, I haven't sized it, right? So uh, let me grab that and this one and group it. Okay, so let's move our boo. Now, it's gonna sit on top of the fence because you want everything to be attached so that it's gonna be more stable, right? So let's put this bee over here. Let's make sure it's attached to something. Okay, that's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna grab all three by hitting the shift key and grabbing it. Then I'm gonna make it smaller. Now, you can also make it fatter. So you can unlock your, your image and see and make it like this. And I kinda like it fatter. There, I like that. Okay, so I kinda like the way this looks. So what I wanna do is Let's grab all of this and duplicate it. Okay, the duplicate one, you're going to weld it. That's gonna give us our background, okay? And this will give us a solid background, and this is what you see back here. It's one piece that the dowels will be to, um, glued to, and you want that because it creates stability. It's really sturdy. Um, and this thing is gonna be holding lights. I ended up doing six lights added to this thing. So it needs to be sturdy enough to hold the six lights and not be floppy at all, right? So that's why you wanna make sure that you uh, weld it all together. The characters I never weld, and I was tempted to not even weld the bats in because now the, the bats have, like this wing has to go right here, right? So. I would have probably just welded the moon to the house, to the boo and the fence, and not included the bats or the characters. That way I can still move my bats and characters wherever I want to. Okay, so here is our piece. This one, now when I pieced it together, I ended up using a hole punch into my background so that the lights can come through. You want the lights to come through because the lights that I bought, which is on Amazon, um, they have these little white tabs. When you put the tabs into the light, it turns off the light. So you don't have to have the lights on all the time, So, but you need access to it. So I used a hole punch because it's one of those things where I'm tempted to cut out little circles within the background, but then you're compromising the sturdiness of the background. So now I'm like rethinking what I said, because I, I always piece together my projects and I do that video first. So then when I do the design space video, I have something to show you. When I put this together, I was tempted to slice out circles so that you know where to put the lights, but I'm not gonna do that because if we did that, you have to put the lights there, otherwise it's gonna become very unsturdy. Um, because if you don't use that hole and you create another hole, you, now you're gonna have more than six holes. I don't want that to happen to the background. So I'm gonna leave it like this, and then you can decide where you wanna put your lights. I didn't want the lights where the, um, where the windows were. I wanted the lights, like I have a light right here, and I think I have one right here, right here, because the volume paper that I end up using, it will catch the light even if it's not directly behind it. And then that way you kind of like get a glow and you don't see the actual light because it feels like you're looking at a strobe light. So if your light was right where the window is, you can see the mechanism and I feel like it kind of gives away like the coolness of like a, a creepy haunted house. So I'm not gonna put a hole in here. But if you were going to, okay, so let's say 
what I would do is, hold on, let me undo that for a second. I would take the haunted house, I would duplicate it, okay? And let's bring it down here for a second. Then I would ungroup it. The only layer that I care about is this top layer because I wanna know where the windows are, okay? So I'm gonna delete this. Um, so what I would probably do just so that I know where the windows are, I would grab these two items and I would slice it. Okay, so let's move this out of the way, okay? All right, so let's delete this house. So what I would do is I would bring in a circle. Oops. And I would make it small. And I would do something like this. Like, let's say we want to put a light there. Oh, it didn't let me slice yet. Hold on. Oh, I don't want that. Hold on. Let's move. Um, hmm. You know what? I don't want to do that. I'm going to take it back. I'm going to delete all this. I don't like that idea. All right, so since I'm going to redo this, recreate the, the background, I'm gonna move the bats out of the way. I'm gonna grab all of this again. I'm gonna duplicate it and weld. That's gonna be my background without the bats, okay? That way you have an option of moving your bats elsewhere. Okay, so this is all done. So let's put this back up here. We're gonna send this all the way to the back. Okay, and put the bats in the, in the picture because we wanna size this right now, okay? So let's look at this. Mine ended up being about 11 inches wide. I mean, obviously you don't wanna slice this, so this can't be 13 inches, right? So let's make it 11.5. So it ends up being 11.5 by 9.2. That's a pretty good size. It needs to be a big cake. It needs to be like a 13 inch cake. Um, now let's look at these characters. So these are print and cut, right? And my printer, I always print it on copy paper, so it's gonna be flimsy. So what I always do is with my print and cut, I always take a square and I'm gonna slice it. Because that gives me, you can do this on 110 pound paper or 65 pound paper. I usually use 65 pound paper because I find with 65 pounds plus this copy paper on top, it's pretty stable. Um, and you can see in my thing, like my characters aren't flimsy at all. This is, you know, it's one cake topper. It moves as one cake topper. It's very sturdy. Um, all right, so then this goes in the back, this goes in the front. You're gonna have a very stable character. I would do that for each one of them. All right, and that's it. So watch the video that I already recorded to to actually assemble this. Oh, what you do need is, hold on. Let's see, so we have our back, we have our all the layers. I think we have everything. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have any comments or questions and if you have any special requests, love to hear about it. So just post it on either the video or on Instagram, Facebook, and then you can always send me an, e an additional email. Um, please post your comments first so that I know to go look for an email with additional details. My email is ann, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right, thanks guys. Have a great day. Oops, as long as I can turn off. <laughs> Bye.